Welcome to the fourth part of the presentation series, Introduction to Sampling for Mineral Processing. In this video, we will look at metallurgical samplers, which will include belt samplers and crushers, linear samplers and enclosures, rotary vesin and arcule samplers, secondary and tertiary samplers. Metallurgical samplers are used for metallurgical reconciliation. They require samples that represent actual metal grades. They should be probabilistic, meaning that every particle from the sample lot should have an equal probability of becoming part of the sample. These kind of samplers produce composite samples for laboratory analysis, and they can also be used for process control. Mine to mill reconciliation compares the mine reports to the mass, grade, and metal processed by the mill. Mill to sales reconciliation, this matches the mill metal production reports to the sales results in a specific period of time. Metallurgical balancing is where the metal mass in the plant feed equals the metal mass of the final concentrate and final tails. It permits defining a budget of how much metal a mill will produce and therefore the funds to be received. In the Sampling Basics presentation, we discussed the golden rule for sampling, which states that for correct sampling, all parts of the material being sampled must have an equal probability of being collected and becoming part of the final sample for analysis. For a representative sample, the total stream should be sampled, the sample cutter should intersect the sample at right angles to the flow, and the sample cutter should travel through the stream at a linear and constant speed. A sampling system is composed of the sampling implement and a sampling protocol. Sampling systems must be flexible enough to permit adjusting the number of increments collected for each sampling lot. The number of increments can affect the precision or the variance. Precision is the magnitude in terms of random variations between replicate measurements, for example, plus or minus one kilogram. It's the degree to which repeated measurements under unchanged conditions show the same results. It is also the error or variance between two or more measurements. In sampling, precision is based largely on the heterogeneity of the ore coupled with the number of increments collected. Here is an example of precision. You can see the true value is 5, plus or minus a variance. For sampling, the variance of the mean of n increments is n times smaller than the variance of a single increment. The variance of the mean is defined as the variance between increments divided by the number of increments. This means that the number of primary increments is the most important parameter in a sampling regime. The variance in results tend to cancel each other out and the results tend to cluster around a central value. The more increments that are taken, the more precise the result. There is an interleaving test which can be performed to determine sampling variance. However, this is beyond the scope of these introductory presentations. We will now look at some specific cross-stream samplers. Here you can see an arm sampler where the cutter is driven through the material on a conveyor belt and the increment is directed to a chute for further processing. This is an installation example of an arm system. It's located on a 48 inch conveyor belt. Here's the cutter of the arm system. You can see that there are adjustable rubber blades which are in contact with the conveyor belt to ensure that all particles are removed. Here's another example of a cross stream sweep sampler for solids. It has an electrically driven cutter which moves across the discharge flow from a conveyor belt. This is an example of a complete composite sampling tower. Increments are taken via an arm sampler, which drop down to a secondary sampler. Increments from the secondary sampler go through a crusher for particle size reduction before going to a tertiary sampler and then on to sample containers. The rejects go to a high inclination conveyor belt and are put back on the process belt. These are two examples of cross stream samplers used for slurry applications. They are mainly used as primary samplers. The one on the left is connected into a vertical pipe. The process slurry comes from the top and discharges out the bottom. An electrically driven cutter moves across the process flow to remove an increment. The one on the right is for horizontal flows. The process is connected to the top and the samplers discharge at the bottom. Again, a cutter is driven across the process flow to remove an increment. 
In both examples, the increments discharges through an integrated launder. Here is an example of a cross stream sampler with an integrated enclosure. You can see the inlet and outlet connections. This is the inside of a cross cut sampler which is rubber lined. You can see the drive mechanism for the cutter, the cutter and the sample increment discharge pipe. Also shown is a drip ring which reduces sample contamination. These are two other types of cross stream samplers. They can be used as primary samplers, depending on the process flow, or as secondary or tertiary samplers. Both are connected to a vertical pipe where the process slurry comes from the top and discharges out the bottom. The one on the left is a rotary vesin sampler where the cutter rotates across the incoming slurry stream. The one on the right is a moving inlet sampler where the hose is moved across the cutter. Here is an example of a metallurgical sampling station. The primary is a linear cross-cut sampler and the secondary is a rotary vesin sampler. The final sample then goes into a bucket. One note about secondary samplers is that for each cut of the primary sampler, the secondary sampler should take a minimum of four cuts. This is an example of a moving inlet sampler where you can see the hose at one side of the cutter. In this case, the sampler has a swirl tank located above a moving inlet sampler. This is used to dissipate any pressure in the sample line before going to the sample cutter. This is a low profile cross stream sampler for use in locations where installation room is a problem. The distance between the inlet and outlet connections is minimized. Here is another example of a sampling station. The process line is connected to a collector tank which is used to dissipate the pressure. This then feeds the primary sampler, which feeds the secondary sampler. And lastly, here is a tail stream sampler. You can see the cutter moving across the process flow. Because this flow is very large, there is also a lot of splashing occurring after the cutter. This completes the metallurgical sampler section of the introduction to sampling presentations. We here at Heath and Sherwood hope you found this useful and informative and please watch the rest of the series. If you require more information, you can contact us directly.